and we can praise him or praise his name all we want, but if we don't live by the strategy, then we're rejecting the man. Martin wanted nonviolent direct action to be the thing that we all live by because it's another way of saying we love each other. If we don't make that change, we can't change the culture. And the issue is not, is not changing the law, the issue is changing the culture. This is what we're about. That's why we have to live until uh, live until we die, as one of the spirituals said. Is that that's what's important? Think of think of these men that are great in Black history. Uh, if you there's about five men. If you call their names and think about their names, you're thinking about the whole struggle of black people and people of goodwill that wanted to be a part. Huh? You're talking about whether they suffered from it or not. You're talking about then, then what really has to be done. Uh, is that, uh, let's look at it. You can see that you can see our real history. Uh, uh, and when January and February comes, please believe this, right? Is that uh, because you see it was uh, 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 <coughs> Washington that uh, when uh, we had uh, first made the first great move, he had a strategy. We were, as, as people left on the street, we were by the millions of black people had nothing to do, didn't know what to do or how to do it. We knew what we wanted, but we didn't know how to get it. We could list what we wanted, but we couldn't do it. We couldn't get what we needed in order to fulfill what we knew was necessary for our lives, right? And Booker T said, is a, a, uh, he wrote a book called Working With Hands. That was his strategy. It'd be uh, it, that you have to learn how to work with your hands for your benefit. That's why he started a university. He didn't start a university just for the matter of saying we've got a school to go to, but that school had to produce men and women who could use their hands so effectively they could change their lives. This is still what we have to face and what we have to see. A uh, 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 Booker T. Washington, uh, we uh, 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 we say that they were arguing with each other. Uh, Booker T. Uh, which side are you on? Booker T. side or are you on uh, W. E. B. side? Right? And oh, we thought we were very sophisticated when we talked like that. Right? And uh, we'd sit around and go by the hour. Uh, which are you? Uh, uh, do you uh, are you a Booker T. Washington man? See, women didn't get in that argument. <laughs> but, or, or are you, uh, or, are you a Booker T. Washington, or are you a W.E.B.? Well, you see, Du Bois only picked up from what uh, 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 Booker T. started. Is that? But those strategies changed us, made us better caused us to be able to, uh, uh, to live beyond. Uh, and the last one of those was Martin Luther King. Had a strategy of nonviolent direct action. Is that uh, W.B. Du Bois is a reason for the NAACP. It was a legal struggle. And, uh, uh, and, he, uh, and, and he started that, right? Because these struggles have to go on, but when we do them, is their only way to be free. None of them are to be forgotten. They are, in fact, to be made real. Right. All right? And until they're made real, we are not free. Uh, 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 it is that uh, uh, we've changed every institution in American life, but it hasn't been changed enough. Right. You know, we, uh, uh, at the table today, uh, the newsman asked me, well, what's your main concern? And uh, I started to tell him, you'll find out tonight in the speech, all right? But, but I, I thought maybe they weren't going to be there. <laughs> uh, uh, so we
we started talking about uh, what about it, it's a uh, matter of these four things again, right? It's a matter of education. Is that uh, uh, right now? That's my major concern. Now I was thinking the other day. Well, I've been at this for a long time, so I could think the other day. I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 70. I'm 79. Uh, I mean, I'm 89. I'm going to be 90 in July, right? And uh, I had a great grandmother that was 108 before she died. And so I figured I'm going to hang around to 110. Now, now the reason for that is not to beat my great grandmother, it is great great grandmother really. Is that that's not the reason. The reason is that if she, living through slavery, living through a farming through generations, if she can do that and still be standing up as the picture shows her when she's when she's 108, died when she was 109, but the Luthers, they were standing up at 108. If she could do that, what right have I got to die before I've done something of value? <laughs> And when we think of the fact, uh, uh, how, how are you going to save you? I, I think I'm concerned about those in prison. We've got over a million men in prison. You can't be a people with people sitting, rotting, being worse when they come out than when they went in. Hollow, not given anything with which to work with being blamed because they don't find a job in a culture that was not made for you to really to go uh, 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 to work in, so the competition already has got you destroyed. All right? Is that, but, but who are we and what are we going to do? That's what makes the real difference for us, is that I have chosen to, to try to think about uh, 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 before I go, and it's not just to honor me, it's to honor my whole lineage. We owe them something yeah. for giving us here. All right? We owe them right, for getting us here. And who can we pay it by taking care of those that are still here? Right? Is that, uh, uh, and, uh, and most of them in jail today shouldn't be there. In fact, ask yourself, if they had had, if most had had a real education, if most of them had had a job, if those, most of them could have lived uh, uh, looking forward uh, uh, for something better, then would they have been in jail in the first place? And if we had a culture that we'd already made a just culture, would they be in jail anyway? Because if the judge is a racist, and the culture is racist, and if the, and if the culture loves money, and you don't have any, huh, what, what chance have you got in the first place? And so when we look at it, is that how do we change the conditions that allow them to, to be? An education we can give them. In fact, we have a, a far above a million, we have a million uh, men in, uh, in the fraternities we got in college, or used to be in college, right? Is that uh, we've got, we've got uh, 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 how many women are in sororities? What are we doing now? If each one of us took upon ourselves to see that one was educated and stayed with it for three or four years, these are no short-term things we're talking about, right? We could change this nation. Is that uh, 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 while you're in in uh, 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 not the sororities, 
but uh, and not uh, 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 but when we are in jail, somebody's paying for your food, your clothing, your shelter. Somebody is paying to take care of you. Well, in that case, if we just just uh, use that, we complain that a lot more money is spent on the education uh, uh, of, of, of people in jail than those that are going to college. Well, if that's true, then let's use our tax money up by making certain that we educate those that are in jail, right? Is that uh, uh, we we can we can change this if we really choose to change it. It's up to us to do it. Right? You know, is that uh, I'm gonna give you one more and I'm gonna quit. All right, but uh, but let's look at this. Right now we're in a place in this state in this city, right? We're in a place where that uh, 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 we have a problem with the fact that we have more land in Detroit than we got people. And we're facing the fact that those who have the money are going to make certain that they own all the land. And where are you going to go and what are you going to do? When, when it, what we've discovered is cooperatives, huh? oh good, was the nice name for what we should be doing anyway. Working together to see that everybody has a decent place to live in. Working together to see that everybody has a piece of land that they can be decently owned. We got, uh, we got how many churches in this city? 4,118. Ah! <laughs> now, sister, you've done the research, but you not only did your research, you did our research. All right? How many of them can we bring together to put the money together to buy all that land they're talking about farming? or they're talking about selling to those who just want to build houses for you to pay rent in. How, how many of us uh, does it take to create a cooperative that will allow us to regain freedom for everybody? Because if we own it, we can sell it to people at the interest we want instead of the interest that downtown wants, right? We can, we can see that they live in it. If something happens to them and they get sick, they don't have to lose it because we own it. And I say this as the chairman of the board of a bank, all right? Because I sat there and I watched what has to happen because the law says it on one hand, or because those who love money more than people want to see it every week. See, I don't have to see it the rest of the time. Every week it's on the books. All right? All right? And we're losing, and people are in pain, and their children are coming out of school. All right? Here's that you can continue it. And it's because we have the opportunity and we don't change it. All right. Amen. 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 And I want you to realize that we have the greatest spiritual, the greatest drama, let's put it that way so we can compare it, the greatest drama of our time. The greatest drama of our time is not men killing men on a battlefield somewhere else. The greatest spiritual drama of our time is the fact that we change this culture with what we learned in church and through the church. Now let the churches come together and take that next step 
and turn it around so that people can live so decently that they have an opportunity to fulfill their possibilities.